everybody, this is Chris of the Ancient Scholar, and uh, today we're going to have a little uh, handheld shaky cam action. Um, we'll be talking a little bit about uh, the uh, metabolism of ethanol, the molecular structure metabolism of ethanol. Even though I've talked about the uh, toxic alcohols in, in other videos, I figured I'd uh, go ahead and uh, show you the molecular structure. Okay, so let's talk about ethanol. Ethanol uh, is this little guy here. It's an alcohol. And uh, when we say alcohol, a lot of people kind of kind of have a misunderstanding about what an alcohol is. Um, an alcohol is fundamentally something where you have some sort of carbon chain, and then the terminal group is a hydroxyl group, um, an oxygen, and a hydrogen. So that OH group, the hydroxyl group at the end here, is really what makes this, this an alcohol. So um, this is um, a methyl group, an ethyl group. So CH3 here is my methyl group, CH2 is the ethyl group, ethyl group, um, and then a hydroxyl group uh, coming off of the, um, the ethyl group. So pretty simple molecule, really. Um, pretty simple, straightforward molecule. Um, and all the alcohols have this, this characteristic structure ending in a hydroxyl group. Um, now, ethanol is, of course, we're very familiar with what it does as far as its intoxicating effects. It's, uh, it has very complex effects on the neurotransmitter systems in the body um, uh, as far as uh, how it works with uh, glutamate, with the GABA receptors, with the, the dopaminergic system, and even possibly the serotonergic system. So there's a lot of complex stuff going on. And as far as I know, there is no known receptor that this acts as a direct ligand for um, it, it, it looks like there are you know there is a, a certain amount of potentiation and, and synergism that occurs with other neurotransmitters but there's not like a ethanol receptor in the body that that, that at least not that I'm aware of um, okay so we talk about the pharmacokinetics of this. Um, it's rapidly absorbed. I think it has a, a bioavailability of about 80 or 90 percent orally. Um, the interesting thing about this is um, where a lot of drugs exhibit first order elimination kinetics, and that is that there is a um, uh, exponential component to their decay to how they're eliminated. That is to say, the more of the drug you have, the faster the elimination, because if you have more drug, then that means that's more drug that that is, you know, it's more statistically likely that it'll interact with an enzyme. Um, and uh, you can watch my videos on the, you know, Michaelis Mitten plots and, and whatnot, um, Line Burke Weaver plots and, and so on, where we actually looked at enzyme kinetics, and at some point, eventually, once you have enough drug in the body, you have saturation of the enzymes, and once you get to saturation kinetics, um, then you go from uh, this first order elimination, this um, exponential uh, type of a curve, to a linear curve, to zero order elimination. Ethanol, however, has it, it, it saturates enzymes at very low concentrations, uh, right around 20, 20 milligrams uh, per deciliter concentrations. Um, you know, 80 milligrams per deciliter is considered, quote unquote, legally intoxicated in most places in the United States. So far below the legal intoxication limit, we have a saturation kinetics uh, occurring in the body. All right. So let's just talk about how ethanol is metabolized. It's metabolized through three different pathways. A major pathway and then two relatively minor pathways. Something, something like 80-90% of all of the ethanol in the body is metabolized. Um, the, initial, the initial thing that happens is metabolism via um, alcohol dehydrogenase or ADH. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw this here again this is going to be some some homemade shaky cam low fidelity kind of stuff going on okay so this is alcohol dehydrogenase that's our major pathway and then there are two other pathways there's a um catalase get my finger out of the way there are catalase enzymes and then you also have uh, 
a set of CYP450 enzymes. Uh, alcohol dehydrogenase, as I talked about in other videos, is not a cytochrome P450 enzyme. Um, it is not an iron-containing enzyme, and I've done some other videos on that. Um, and then there is the, uh, the CYP452E1, I believe. I hope. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Okay, so these are the three different pathways. The, ant the um, ADH, alcohol dehydrogenase, is going to be the major pathway. And the first thing that ethanol, or we sometimes call this ETOH, okay, ethanol, ethanol alcohol, is metabolized to, a, it's, it's kind of a secondary metabolite known as acetaldehyde. And let me just draw that, CE. T A L D E H Y D E. Okay, so I have ethanol metabolized these pathways to acetaldehyde. Acetaldehyde is very similar in structure to the ethanol, except what we see happening is um, we see oxidation of ethanol. Um, and, and, and this is actually what happens is ethanol becomes progressively more oxidized. And what do I mean by oxidized is oxidation is generally adding oxygen or taking away electrons. Well, in the ethanol, let me just put acetaldehyde here. So in the ethanol molecule, let me set them up here, I have an oxygen covalently bound. I have a hydroxyl group here. But what I have done fundamentally is a, a, a dehydration reaction. And um, I have taken away one of the hydrogens, okay, because there are two hydrogens here. One of those hydrogens is taken away, and I've replaced it with a double covalent bond to an oxygen, okay? So I have, in fact, oxidized this because now I have, rather than a single covalent bond, I have a double covalent bond. And, of course, the um, electronegativity of oxygen is going to kind of pull some electron density toward it. So I have, in fact, oxidized ethanol to make acetaldehyde, all right? And then acetaldehyde is metabolized to the, uh, the final metabolite here. I know it's ghetto, but it's all right, all right? And that is an enzyme called aldehyde, A-L-D-H, aldehyde dehydrogenase. And I think to a minor extent, um, you do have some catalases and uh, 2E1 enzymes that uh, also help metabolize acetaldehyde to this molecule here. This molecule here is acetic acid. Um, some people will say acetate. And whenever you, see, you hear like a, a tate, like a lactate or acetate, what that means is that, that you're talking about... Um, the the conjugate base of um, the acid. So this is acetic acid, and what happens is acetic acid um, donates its proton. Okay, this donates its uh, proton here. Boom! The oxygen holds on to that electron, and so now this this part is negatively charged, right? Um, and this is acetate. This is now acetate when acetic acid donates a proton. Okay, that's what acids do. Donates a proton and it becomes the acetate ion. And there's a negative charge on this oxygen because this oxygen is like, oh, fine, you want to go uh, go go away and interact with uh, the water there, their little, little hydrogen. Well, uh, yeah, I'm going to take your electron and then you can go away. Boom, he goes away. He interacts with the water molecule to become a hydronium ion, and that's the conjugate acid. And then I have my conjugate base, a negatively charged acetate. So some people will say that this is acetate, and some people will say it's acetic acid. It really is one and the same. It's just talking about acetate is the, the acetate is just well after the acid did what acids do, and you can see I've further oxidized the ethanol. So here I've gone from a single covalent bond to a double covalent bond, and from here I've gone to a double covalent bond and. I have uh, gotten rid of this hydrogen here. Um, and guess what? That oxygen, boom, gained an electron because of that. All right.
And then ultimately, this is nice and polar, really, really polar. I mean, this is pretty polar too here. Um, you've got this oxygen, the hydroxyl groups are generally very polar um, anyway. But the cool thing about ethanol is it has this really polar area here. And then you have a methyl group on this side, which is really nonpolar. So ethanol is really pretty good at distributing throughout the body compartments. Um, it can get through membranes, it can stay in the blood, and it's really good at distributing itself um, fairly, fairly evenly throughout the body compartments because of its kind of its amphipathic nature, being both lip lipophilic and hydrophilic. Um, this guy, however, acetate, this is really, really polar, okay? The more you oxidize something, generally the more polar you're going to make it. And, and isn't that kind of the point of metabolism in a lot of cases, just to make your metabolites more polar? And why do I want nice polar charged metabolites? Well, because nice polar charged things are really good at staying in your urine and getting peed off. And that's kind of the point of metabolism in a lot of cases. So, there you go. Um, a thing to note is that um, ethanol, uh, chronic use of ethanol can induce, can cause enzyme induction here, P452E1 induction. Um, so people that are chronic alcoholics or have more, more chronic exposure to, to ethanol uh, are going to have higher levels and higher activity of 452E1 enzymes. And so they will be, to some extent, be able to metabolize this more efficiently. However, the major pathway does not change the alcohol dehydrogenase. It's this relatively, relatively minor um, pathway that uh, sees enzyme induction. Okay, guys, so that's the, the basic pharmacokinetics and the molecular structure of ethanol as it's metabolized. Hopefully you enjoy that. I know this is kind of a low uh, production quality video, but uh, you know, what the heck. It is what it is. All right, guys, as always, thanks for hanging in there.